Okay, once again, welcome everyone. We are so happy to have you here this evening. Um, we are joined by LMC Healthcare and Nicole, can you please introduce yourself? Let us know a bit about who you are and why you've decided to help us with this workshop this evening. Sure, so good evening, everyone. As Natalie said, my name is Nicole. I'm a registered dietitian and a diabetes educator at LMC. Uh, LMC, we manage mostly diabetes and endocrinology issues. Uh, like thyroid disease um, or other hormonal imbalances. So patients are always asking about recipes, especially baking, um, that would be conducive for their diabetes. So this recipe, of course, is for anyone, but we're going to talk about how it can fit into the lifestyle of someone with diabetes. I love to bake. You might notice my bakery sign in my kitchen. This is not an actual bakery. Uh, this is my own kitchen. So I love to bake and I'm not sure if you'll be following along with me or just making the recipe afterwards, um, but it's a really easy recipe. So I hope you enjoy it. Great, thanks so much. Um, we do have a question just to start off. Um, the first question is, can I use almond flour instead of bananas in this recipe? So almond flour, you could replace a part of the flour, the whole wheat flour with almond flour but you can't replace the bananas with almond flour. The bananas are there to add moisture um, and tenderness to the muffin because there's no fat in this muffin. There's no butter, there's no oil. Um, so if you replace the bananas with almond flour, it would be very dry and dense, but you can certainly replace some of the whole wheat flour um, with almond flour. Almond flour, obviously, if you're gluten intolerant, uh, if you're gluten intolerant, the best equal substitute would be an all-purpose gluten-free flour, which is usually a mix of several types of flours, but you can buy it pre-made. Great. Thanks so much for that answer. Um, I think we can get started. Okay, great. So I am going to just change my view so that I can see, um, because right now I see Natalie, so I'm going to change it. There we go. Okay. So firstly, I hope everyone got the recipe. So this I modified from the recipe that I had online and kind of amalgamated it with the recipe that I've been making, that I think I got from my grandmother. Um, so my kitchen smells like ginger because I've had my ginger mixed up here for the last hour or so, just getting set up. So banana gingerbread muffins, honestly, they really do taste um, much like I remember of molasses cookie. I'm from Newfoundland, so a molasses cookie is kind of a traditional um, snack, but it's quite high in sugar. So the difference with this recipe is that it gives you some of those same flavors. Oh, you see my dog. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> the difference with this recipe is uh, it's lower in sugar. As I mentioned earlier, it has no fat, um, but some of the ingredients give it some really great moisture uh, and tenderness, and it has been taste tested by my kids, and we got two thumbs up, so hopefully you like it. So I've pre-measured, which it never looks this neat when I'm baking, um, but I actually kind of like it. So I might do it from here on, on out. Um, so what I've started is adding my flour. So this recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of whole wheat flour. You could easily, if you don't have whole wheat, use all purpose flour. Um, you could use half and half. That would produce a little bit less dense of a muffin. Uh, if you're using flour alternatives like almond flour or gluten-free flour, um, especially with the almond flour, you're going to get more protein, which is excellent. Uh, almond flour is quite pricey, so that's why I, I suggest it as well, like the gluten-free all-purpose flour, which is a pre-made mix. Um, but you can be flexible. I used all whole wheat um, tonight. So the only other thing I've added in this bowl so far is a shake of salt. So the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of salt which is usually in any baking recipe, it helps to bring out the flavors. So hopefully he's not um, disturbing us the whole time. Um, I, think a, I think he's a great addition to the image. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will I will interject here and just say we have um, another question. Uh, what could be used instead of the bananas as a substitute? Yeah, so pureed pumpkin could be used instead of the bananas or pureed sweet potato um, or unsweetened applesauce. So all of those would be a good substitution if you don't like bananas. So I've even uh, had like leftover steamed or baked sweet potatoes take out the middle, give them a good mash, and that's a good substitute. Obviously the flavor will be a little bit different, um, but the pumpkin is really good too, especially in the fall. 
pumpkin and ginger and, and cinnamon go nicely together. Okay, any other questions before we move on? Don't see any questions right now. Okay, great. One thing I'm gonna do before I just preheat my oven to 350. I always make sure there's nothing in there and there happens to be something in there. So we'll let the oven preheat. And the first part of the recipe just calls for us to combine all the dry ingredients. So as I mentioned, I have my flour in here, two and a quarter cups. And in here, I've already measured out the baking powder and the baking soda. So this recipe, honestly, for 12 muffins, it does call for more baking powder, baking soda than typical. So this is to give it a little bit extra leavening because like I said, it doesn't contain much fat. So we're trying to replicate the tenderness of the muffin. So we have a little bit more leavening. So I've mixed together the baking powder and the baking soda. I'll just add those in. So it's two teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. And for the rest of the dry ingredients, like I said, I already added in the half a teaspoon of salt. And then here, the spice of the night, you know, I've combined my ginger and cinnamon. So a lot, two teaspoons of gin ginger and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So this is just ground um, prepackaged cinnamon. You could also have a cinnamon stick and kind of um, shave it in with a grater. I haven't used fresh ginger in this recipe, but I have used fresh ginger in some other recipes that are like a ginger muffin or ginger cookie. It's just a little bit um, spicier, if you will. Um, but here I have two teaspoons of ginger and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those in to the dry ingredients. And then next, something that's not always typical, the sugar also goes into the dry ingredients. So in this recipe, you know, we have the bananas for sweetness, but we also have some, you know, sugar for sweetness. So in total, there's a half a cup of sugar in this recipe. Half of that comes from this quarter of a cup of brown sugar. So I always use light brown sugar just because I prefer the taste. But anytime you see brown sugar, I have to move him. Anytime you see brown sugar, it's usually packed brown sugar, which this is. So I'm gonna add that in. And I'm just gonna put my little doggy out here to have his supper while you guys hopefully mix up. And Nicole, we do have a question. Sure. Um, so the next question in the chat says, can baking powder and baking soda be used interchangeably? Good question. No, they can't. Um, so baking soda um, works better um, when it reacts like with a liquid. So we will be adding milk to this recipe. Um, so if you were using a recipe that like cookies or something, it would usually call for baking powder if there's not a liquid in there. So sometimes a recipe will call for one or another for that reason. This recipe calls for both, like I mentioned, for that extra leavening, and we will be adding in some liquid uh, in a little bit. Honestly, if you're stuck and you only have one or the other, I have definitely done that and only used one and added a little bit extra. Um, sometimes, especially in a muffin or cake, it just is a little bit flatter, but it's not much of a difference in taste. Also be mindful that your baking soda is not expired. I've used expired baking soda and the finished product has a very awful taste. Um, so be aware of that. If you're not baking very often and you get the giant thing of baking soda, it can go bad. Okay, so I've added in the brown sugar and the spices, the ginger and the cinnamon, the baking soda and the baking powder. Now that's basically all the dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna whisk them together. And then I have a separate bowl for my wet ingredients. So the recipe calls for about a cup of mashed bananas. So that's about two bananas. So you can see I have some very rotten bananas here, which is great. Um, so as a banana gets more rotten, the starch turns more and more into sugar. So obviously nothing changes about the banana, um, but the, the peptides of the starch or the molecules of the starch um, break down over time and they turn more into sugar. So if you're someone who likes a green banana, 
you're going to have a starchier banana. If you're someone who likes a spotted banana like me, you're going to have a banana that's a little bit uh, sweeter. So I'm going to add those into my bowl. And you can freeze uh, rotten bananas, not in the peel though, just a tip. So uh, if you have some rotten bananas, like this one is definitely off last legs um, and I wasn't going to make anything with them, then I would um, take them out of the wrapper and wrap them individually in plastic wrap and put them in the freezer or chop them in slices and put them in a container and put them in a freezer and use them for smoothies or for recipes like this. So first I'm going to mash my bananas with my potato masher. So this looks like it will yield uh, about a cup of mashed bananas, which is just what we're looking for. Sorry if this is loud. We can't really hear that. Them. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Natalie. <laughs> well, you can hear it, but we can't hear that sound, so that's good. <laughs> um, we, do have a, we do have a question in the chat, and it's regarding the molasses. Can there be a molasses substitute? Yeah. So molasses is, sorry about that, molasses is uh, another form of sugar. So often patients with diabetes will say like, oh, I use brown sugar or maple syrup because it's better for me than white sugar. But in fact, sugar is sugar. So there's the same uh, grams of sugar per gram of sugar or a teaspoon of sugar for brown sugar, white sugar, cane sugar, molasses, maple syrup, agave. There's lots out there, but you can substitute another liquid sugar like agave or maple syrup if you don't like or if you don't have molasses, but it does really um, help the ginger come out and give this muffin the like gingerbread taste like a gingerbread cookie. If you switched up these ingredients and used maple syrup, obviously it would still taste good, but it would just have a little bit of a different taste. Same thing if you used a different puree like applesauce or um, pumpkin or sweet potato, it would just have a bit of a different taste, but you can definitely switch it up for sure. Okay, so I have my bananas mashed. Now I'm gonna add some of the other wet ingredients. The next one is a teaspoon of vanilla. So I always use pure vanilla because it tastes a lot better. It's more expensive, but it lasts longer because you usually need to use less. I never measure my vanilla, to be honest. So it calls for a teaspoon. So I just put in a little four and I really like vanilla. And next, the molasses. So again, I'm from Newfoundland. My nan used to say as cold as slow, slow as cold molasses running up a hill. So hopefully this doesn't take too long to pour in here. I always have my little spatula to get it out. So it's a quarter of a cup of molasses. And for reference, a teaspoon of sugar has five grams of sugar. Okay, so obviously we're using the quarter of a cup of molasses. We're using the quarter cup of brown sugar. And this makes 12 pretty sizable muffins. Um, I have some pre-made muffins there. Um, so I can't do that math in my head, but I have it on the nutrition info. So it ends up being 11 grams of sugar per muffin, which we'll talk about how that can fit into a snack or a meal um, at the end. There is a question about the brown sugar. Um, so there's the question says, can I use Splenda in place of brown sugar? I'm pre-diabetic, so trying to keep low on sugar. Absolutely, yes, you can. So Splenda measures cup for cup with sugar. There's also Splenda brown sugar, which you can also use, but either way, you wouldn't change the measurement. So it's not like some artificial sweeteners, which are like twice as sweet as sugar, and therefore you would use half the amount. You can replace um, cup for cup with Splenda or Stevia. Okay, and that's totally safe for patients with diabetes. Next uh, on my wet ingredients is the Greek yogurt. So I know, you know, and Natalie mentioned fiber, but I always like to talk about protein a lot as well um, for people with diabetes or even people without diabetes, because the biggest problem today I find is we're eating fast, we're eating things that are quick and accessible, and those are usually carbohydrate based and low in protein. So in this instance, this is something that replaces a little bit of the properties of the fat is this Greek yogurt. So I have 0% plain Greek yogurt here. So there's no sugar, there's lots of protein and there's no fat. If I were making this for a baby, my kids were babies, I would probably use a whole milk uh, Greek yogurt just to get some more fat in there. 
Um, I have many patients with diabetes who maybe are elderly and trying to gain weight. So this is another healthy way to add fat without adding sugar. So I have a half a cup of the plain Greek yogurt here. Nicole, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because one of the comments in the chat is um, that one of the participants is wondering about how to eat for both diabetes and high cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend this recipe in that instance? Absolutely. There's no fat in this recipe if you use 0% Greek yogurt and depending on the milk that you choose. So I'll show you the milk that I had, um, but you can choose a milk that, you know, for cholesterol would be 1% or less if it's a cow's milk. If you choose an alternative milk, which I happen to have, um, then we can talk about that as well in a second, um, but certainly. And some of the additives to this recipe that add more fiber, we know that soluble fiber helps to kind of um, attach on to cholesterol, specifically the bad cholesterol, LDL, and help to excrete it from your body. So we're getting fiber from the whole wheat flour, we're getting fiber from the bananas, um, and we're getting no fat, like I mentioned. There's not even any eggs in this recipe, um, which is honestly kind of hard to um, to find. But yeah, it still it still turns out really well. I, would, I think I missed some molasses, so I'm gonna get that in there. And now for the rest of the wet ingredients, um, a half a cup of milk of your choice. Um, so I happen to have this almond and cashew milk. My son's allergic to dairy, so we always have a milk alternative. So one thing to keep in mind, depending on your goals, like Natalie said, it could be diabetes, it could be cholesterol, it could be calcium and vitamin D for bone health. So cow's milk is always going to be the most available form of calcium and vitamin D, but often the non-dairy milks are fortified with calcium and vitamin D, just not as much. This only has 10% of what you need in a day for vitamin D, that's for an adult, um, and 23% of what you need in a day for calcium but it has no fat, it has no sugar, and it has eight grams of protein, which is pretty comparable to cow's milk. And honestly, it's just what I have, so it's what I'm going to use, but you can use whatever milk uh, you like. So a half a cup of milk. Okay, so I'm gonna double check because I always miss an ingredient. So for my dry ingredients, I have whole wheat flour, brown sugar, the baking powder, baking soda, the salt and the ginger and cinnamon. And then for my wet, I have milk, uh, yogurt, molasses, vanilla, and the bananas. So now I'm just gonna mix up my wet ingredients to get them nice and cohesive. This is quite runny. Um, the wet ingredients in this recipe, but that's totally normal. If you wanted a thicker or more moist um, muffin, you could add more bananas or more of your whatever puree you choose, unsweetened applesauce, what have you. So now I'm just going to add my wet ingredients to my dry ingredients. And now just a note, I'm not adding anything to this recipe, but you certainly could at this point add a nut, a fruit, um, a seed, anything like that. And I would add it into the dry ingredients. So if you're adding blueberries, for example, you put them uh, into the flour, lightly toss them in the flour, that will help prevent them from sinking to the bottom of the muffin when you're baking. Or chocolate chips, if you're putting those in, the same thing. Raspberries, I would usually recommend using frozen fruit and not thawing it. Because if you thaw it, it's gonna be a blue muffin. Um, and if you don't thaw it, um, you're going to be able to quickly incorporate it into the flour, mix it up and get it into the oven. Uh, and you're not going to face the running of the blueberries. You could also add walnuts or for a friend with uh, cholesterol concerns, I would add something like chia seeds or ground flax seeds at this stage. Uh, and probably about a quarter cup of any of those additives would be perfect. So I'm not adding anything today. So I'm going to add the wet ingredients in. Okay, I'm going to grab a bit of a bigger spatula and just kind of mix this together. So I try not to over mix, but just turn and fold in the dry ingredients until they're all mixed in. So the recipe says um, 
Okay, I forgot to tell you that I always cheat here, but the recipe says to add the wet ingredients to the dry and then separately incorporate the mashed bananas uh, intermittently in between. I honestly never do that, A, because it's another bowl to clean, and B, I found it makes absolutely no difference. What I really like about baking is that you don't have to be exact. Um, I always reduce the sugar in a recipe if I'm making a birthday cake for my kids or a cookie, uh, tea buns, my grandmother's famous tea buns. I reduce the sugar by like a third and don't even notice the difference. Um, so I'm never exact with these things. Certainly be, be precise with the flour and such, but um, a lot of those extras you don't need to be exact with. So this will be kind of thick, like a, like a dough, to be honest. And this is because of the lack of fat or eggs um, and the whole wheat flour. That also makes this muffin very filling. Now I'm going to get my muffin pan. So I always use liners. You don't need to use liners, but these are uh, kind of a firm liner with um, a tacky um, inside. So they really don't stick. And this is something to be super mindful of in a recipe without fat, because uh, you could run into a big mess if you just use a nonstick pan and don't spray it. So I use liners and I spray them. So you can choose your fat here. Um, we might have people who are used to um, kind of putting some melted butter in the pan. You can do that um, depending on your nutrition goals, or you can use a healthy fat spray. I just have a canola oil uh, spray, which works just fine. So this is where your, your hands get dirty. So I'm going to grab a spoon. <clears throat> And honestly, I found when I made these the last time um, that it could make more than 12 if you'd like to make a small muffin. So remember one of these muffins, that's a 12th of the recipe, is 150 calories uh, and about 30 grams of carbohydrates. So it has that four grams of fiber, which we end up subtracting from the 30. So that leaves at, at about 26 grams of total carbohydrate. Now we always subtract the fiber from the total carbohydrate on any nutrition label because fiber is the non-digestible portion of carbohydrate. Remember I said it attaches onto that LDL cholesterol and excretes it out your body. That's because we don't digest it. It just goes through our body as a little sweeper and cleans stuff on the way out. And of course helps with your digestion. So the more fiber, the better. We can incorporate this into meals and snacks with additional fiber, or if you added like some ground flax seed or a nut or a seed, you would have added some more fiber right into the recipe. So you can certainly stretch this to 16 smaller muffins, um, but I'm gonna make it 12 today. So I have a tablespoon here, like the big spoon, and I just get a big scoop. And then whatever's left, I'll evenly divide through. You can also make this in a loaf pan as a loaf. Just remember the nutrition infos for a 12th of the recipe if you're cutting it into slices. And I'm getting a lot of uh, batter this time. I think I might actually save the rest and put it in a little loaf pan. So my kids are four and seven, and this recipe is great. They will bring it to school. It has no nuts, um, and they don't need a gigantic muffin. So my recipe really stretched this time. So I think I had really big bananas, and that certainly helped. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little loaf pan and show you what that looks like. So this might be loud, but I'll always kind of knock out any air, make sure they're nice and even. I'm gonna put them in for about 15 uh, to 20 minutes on 350. So I always set my timer for 14 minutes because my oven's really hot. Um, but basically when they're firm to the touch and they bounce back, much like a cake, um, they're done. So I'm gonna stick these in. 
set my timer and grab my loaf pan. I'll also spray my loaf pan. So my kids get a good kick out of this. It's a tiny little loaf pan, but it makes a really cute little loaf. And after I put this in, I just want to show you some examples of how you might eat this muffin uh, and incorporate it into a balanced meal or snack before we move on to questions. Perfect, so I get a little loaf pan. So when you think about cost as well, like these days, which is an issue, obviously, if you were to buy muffins or buy a pack of granola bars that would give you say 16 servings, it will cost you a lot more than this recipe is costing you. And obviously these ingredients will stretch through more than just one recipe. So now I'm gonna put my loaf in. I'll keep it at the same timer. Okay, great. So I wanna show you a few examples of how you could eat this muffin. Um, I can move on to that, Natalie, if there's no other questions like about the recipe. There aren't any other questions at the moment, um, but please feel free to put your questions in the chat, even if they're not directly linked to what's happening um, in the recipe portion. Um, we, we're glad to, to see if we can answer. Absolutely. Okay, so I made some muffins um, a few days ago. I'm going to come around so you can kind of see what they end up looking like. Um, but these are the muffins. So as you can see, they rose really well. They're not like a short muffin. Uh, they're nice and moist. Um, and I like them just as they are, maybe uh, cut open with uh, a little bit of peanut butter or a little bit of margarine on them. So I came up with a couple ideas of how we might incorporate this into a meal or a snack, um, you know, rather than just eating the muffin plain. So the first one I have is for breakfast. So I have some uh, Greek yogurt here. So this is a lightly flavored 0% vanilla Greek yogurt, and this is about a half of a cup. So we know for patients um, over the age of 55 that they require three servings of dairy today, uh, per day rather, to meet their calcium and vitamin D requirements one of the servings would count as yogurt, it would be uh, about a half a cup. So this would count as about 500 milligrams of sodium. Um, I'm sorry, calcium, not sodium. And remember that we said the milk has about 23% of what you need for the day in calcium. So it's all about spreading it equally like throughout the day. So what I'm gonna do on top of this yogurt is I'm gonna take actually half a muffin. I'm gonna crumble it over my yogurt. So I love doing this with banana bread or any, um, any baked good, really. So remember, we're just using half the muffin because we have some good protein in the yogurt. And now I'm going to take about two tablespoons of walnuts. So walnuts offer really good healthy fats, lots of fiber. And in a, a breakfast like this, it's really about texture. So we have the smooth yogurt, the soft um, you know, muffin, and then some crunchy walnuts. Again, I'm roughing it, but about two tablespoons of walnuts. And then on the theme of our spices, I'm adding a little bit extra cinnamon on the top. And this is your breakfast. So you could use this as a snack or you could use it, like I said, as your breakfast. Oh, we've got some nuts on the counter. I'm sure one of my kids will eat this when they get home, but we have yogurt, half of the crumbled muffin, some walnuts and a sprinkle of cinnamon. So we have healthy fats, we have fiber, um, and you know this is going to be very filling. Uh, and it's inexpensive and it's very quick to make. So this is one breakfast option. I love that, Nicole, looks great. Thank you. We do have a question about um, the muffin itself. And sure. uh, the question is whether or not we can add something as a top layer for baking. Uh, a top layer on the muffin, like a streusel or something? Um, well, we'll have to ask, maybe the, the person asking the question can be more dire direct, but maybe um, I was thinking in my mind, it could be something like that, or um, it could we add maybe, uh, I'm not sure, like a drizzle of something. Like what, what do you recommend, if anything, to kind of jazz up the, the recipe maybe mm -hmm. later on? You certainly could. So you could do a little bit of a crumble. 
Um, you would use a nut of your choice. So the walnuts I have here are chopped raw walnuts. So those would work well. So you would need to mix those with a little bit of melted butter or margarine. <clears throat> and then you could use your spices, sprinkle that over top of the recipe and it would give it a little bit of a crystallized crunchy topping. If you wanted to do a drizzle, a drizzle is usually sugar and a liquid. So you would have to use a sugar of your choosing and then some milk. And you could add some maple syrup or molasses to that to make a molasses syrup. So we're adding more sugar, we're adding more sweetness. This is becoming more like a dessert, um, but you could certainly do a drizzle or a crumble on top if you wanted to. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the the there was more clarification. So just saying a layer of peanut butter or something uh, of that nature before putting it into the oven. Good question. So I wouldn't put the peanut butter before baking. Um, because peanut butter has oils in it and the oils in the peanut butter don't have as high a cooking point as is going to be happening in that oven. So you might get a bit of burnt taste. If the peanut butter was mixed into the recipe, that would be fine, but I would definitely put peanut butter on the muffin after it's cooked. That would be perfect. Okay. Speaking of peanut butter, um, so for a snack, or I have a lot of patients, you know, as you get older, your appetite might reduce a little bit. You're not having a set lunch. And a lot of times it's helpful for your blood sugars to eat regularly throughout the day to help to keep things stable. Um, so we do encourage not going longer than four to five hours without eating. So this is something that could work for a really uh, nice light lunch. So I have, I'll come up to the screen there. This is a small plate. This is like a four inch plate. So I have here some melted all natural peanut butter. So this is gonna be a dip for the apples and the carrots. So I have apples and carrots here. You could use celery uh, or anything that you enjoy and with our muffin. So we're getting fiber here, protein. Remember we put that Greek yogurt in there. We're getting additional fiber here from the carrots and the apple. So a lot of patients with diabetes often ask, well, I can't eat fruit, you know, there's too much sugar. But what we want to think about is how can we incorporate fruit that has a lot of fiber. So here we're having the apple with the skin. So we're getting lots of additional fiber. So this is gonna help it to be a slower release in the blood and not raise the blood sugar as quickly. And then we're adding the all natural peanut butter, which is literally just peanuts. If you're getting a regular peanut butter, there'll be some sugar added to keep it cohesive. Um, you know, you have to mix the natural peanut butter. So we have your muffin, uh, a vegetable, a fruit, and a nice dip. You could also do a little dip of Greek yogurt here with cinnamon on top if you don't like peanut butter, but this could work for a meal um, or depending on your appetite a snack. So you can kind of think outside the, the muffin box and not just eat it as a muffin, but these are two great kind of meal options. Maybe anyone else have any ideas how to incorporate something like this into a meal or a snack? Um, and, you know, we can think more about these mini meals, especially as we're eating more regularly or maybe trying to watch our portions. Sure, if anyone has any ideas, please just place them in the chat. Um, and it doesn't need to be the muffin per se. Maybe you have a, a meal, a, your go-to meal, meal as a mini meal that you'd like to share with others in the in the chat as well. And you know, while we wait to see if someone has a question, you know, <clears throat> the biggest benefits today, like with fiber, are really not only conducive to diabetes, heart disease, and weight loss. Um, they're going to help all of those conditions. So remember, fiber is the non-digestible portion of carbohydrate. So that means it's going to slow down the digestion of any carbohydrate that you're eating. So if you compared a slice of white bread with a slice of whole grain bread, um, the whole grain bread will have a more desirable result on your blood sugar. And remember, it's excreting that cholesterol and it's keeping you fuller for longer. So you're less likely to have cravings or eat more at the next meal or snack. Um, so we can't underestimate, you know, the power of nutrition, especially this protein and fiber. I was just reading research today about protein and fiber and menopause and how it can improve the symptoms of menopause. So there's so many benefits to it. And I think this is an easy way to work it in. But. 
Yeah, that's, I think that's great. Um, we, we haven't, we're still waiting for folks to comment, um, but I, I did have a question myself. Um, you mentioned that you had, you made these muffins a couple days ago. Um, how well do they keep and how uh, long? And I guess, do you have any tips on how to freshen them up or make them a little bit, um, I guess, stale over time? Mm -hmm. So this muffin, because there's no fat uh, and no preservatives, like a store-bought muffin, it's not going to last for weeks. But in an airtight container, I think about five to six days. <clears throat> they never last that long in my house, so I'm not a good test subject, perhaps. But uh, as soon as they're baked and cooled, you can freeze them. And if you're someone who won't eat 12 muffins in five days, um, I just defrost it on the bread setting in the microwave, and they're like they've just come out of the oven or I'll take them out two or three at a time, let them defrost naturally, and then nuke it in the microwave for five to eight seconds, and they're nice and moist again. So these are three days old, um, and they're still very moist, um, but I, I did freeze half the batch as well, and I'll probably freeze some of that because I got a loaf out of it uh, as well. But for any baked good without fat, um, you know, best results three to four days in an airtight container. If you're not going to eat that many in that time, as soon as they're cooled, I would freeze them. Thanks so much for that. Um, I'm just thinking too, as you were, um, we we're waiting to see if there are other ideas for the muffin. Um, I'm thinking, is it could the muffin be eaten in, with a soup? I mean, it, it, we have a lot of soups that are sweeter, um, like for example, squash. I'm just wondering if you have a recommendation at all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the muffin, you're really thinking of this as your carbohydrate, right? And when we look at the healthy plate or visualize the healthy plate, we're aiming for half the plate of you know fruit or vegetables or a mixture of those a quarter of your plate of carbohydrates and a quarter of your plate of protein. So we know that this muffin contains that, that you know, 26 grams of carbohydrate. It has five grams of protein from the Greek yogurt. So we're going to want to, like both of these options do, add a little bit more fiber and more protein. So the soup wants to have both of those components. So I have a sweet potato um, butternut squash soup recipe, which also has white beans in it. It's pureed all together. There's cinnamon in it as well. Um, so that soup with a muffin, you would get the balance that you're looking for. An example that might not quite be filling enough would be say just a tomato soup with the muffin. You're not quite getting enough protein for a meal. Certainly for a snack, totally fine. But like these both add protein and fiber, you need to bulk it up a little bit if it's gonna be like a meal. This could be a snack on its own um, because it contains both of those nutrients. Um, but we can be creative and combine it with things um, to make it more part of a meal. I love having a muffin with uh, breakfast for supper. So scrambled eggs with veggies, a muffin, and a side of fruit. That would be a perfect meal. I love that idea because we're around that time of day right now, right? Yes. So <laughs> breakfast for dinner. Um, they have a question in the chat and it's about um, the concept, like how do you feel about the idea of putting protein powder in the muffins? Hmm. So I've definitely done that. It has to be a recipe where it's been tested and incorporated in because it does change the properties a little bit while baking. But if someone is really having difficulty meeting their protein requirements because of low appetite or illness or they need to gain weight, there are many options for uh, recipes with protein powder. So with diabetes, you wanna be mindful that it's a plain protein powder, and usually those are called isolates. So uh, isolate. So, oh, that was 14 minutes. I'm gonna check those muffins <laughs> one sec. So they're still a bit mushy. So I'm just going to give it five more minutes. That time went really fast. Um, so an isolate, like a whey protein isolate, if you're not intolerant to dairy, whey is the protein of milk, or a soy protein isolate if you are allergic to dairy. So these are just the protein of that product. They're not sweetened with additional sugar. You want to check the nutrition label to ensure that your protein powder has less than five grams of carbohydrate per serving. And then a serving is usually about a quarter of a cup. So it might be such that in a recipe like this, you would back off on a quarter of a cup of the flour and add a quarter of a cup of the protein powder. Um, but 
honestly, most of us don't need it, but unless we fit into one of those categories, it's certainly a doable option. Alternatively, you could have this with a smoothie that you put protein powder into. Um, if you have um, you know, larger nutrition requirements, the taller we are, the higher our nutrition requirements are. Um, so if you need more protein, you could add it to a smoothie that contains um, protein powder. Thanks so much for that. Um, I guess my next question is uh, about how you checked to see if the muffins were ready. <laughs> Good question. So I stuck my finger in them. Um, and when I stuck my finger in them, it was still mushy. So I wasn't getting the spring back that I'm getting with this muffin. I could have stuck my finger right down through if I really wanted to, but I didn't want to do that. Um, so this is probably naive of me, but I usually go by touch. If you really wanted to check, you could stick a toothpick in and if it comes out clean, it's done. If it comes out with crumbs on it, it's not done. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I'm just going to welcome everyone to, uh, again, add any questions that come to mind. Um, it could be about the baking process in general. It doesn't necessarily need to apply to the muffins per se. Um, and if there are any qu other questions about additives like the protein powder, please feel free to ask. Um, this is your time. Uh, Nicole is our expert and we want to thank Nicole. Thank you so much uh, for doing this once again. Um, this is so educational and uh, the muffins look fantastic. We'll, ha we'll all have to try. Uh, on, our, on our own time, if you're not already doing it right at home, and if you are, that's great. Um, would love to just, I'll put my uh, my email in the chat. If you do end up making mm -hmm. these uh, muffins, please send us photos. It would be great to see, and I can always share them with Nicole. Yeah, that would be awesome. How you make them, how you incorporate them into a meal. I encourage you to do it and not shy away from baking. Um, and like many of our participants said, you can use Splenda to lower the sugar further. You can add more nutrition with the ground flax seed. So don't be shy with baking. It's not an exact science. Yeah, it smells very gingery in here. So <laughs> that's for sure. They're getting very close. Yeah, and if you think of questions after, feel free to email Natalie and we're happy to answer them. Um, yeah, and at LMC, we have a lot of free workshops. You don't need to be a patient of LMC to attend those. Um, so if you want to learn more about diabetes, um, eating for diabetes, or just the disease in general, like we have a lot of free workshops. There's some more cooking classes too um, that are put off. I'd love to hear someone's voice. It's so hard to get people to interact on the, on the Zoom calls. Well, we have quite a few responses in the chat and I'm just putting in the LMC um, website uh, into the chat. Uh, it's lmc.ca. Um, for those of you who um, are interested in looking at other workshops, um, the um, so one of the questions is, how do I register for other workshops? And we are working with LMC um, uh, as a partnership to uh, have a fall um, uh, cooking workshop as well, so one in September. But you're welcome to go and navigate the lmc.ca website. And if you have any questions about navigation, how to find things, I can always just relate to Nicole or others, and we'll be able to give you your responses. So please feel free to email me if you are having any issues with the navigating of the site. Um, and we have just some some responses in the chat. One of them, um, one person says that they're making the muffins right now and they are amazing. Uh, we also have another person that says, uh, good recipe, making them tomorrow. Um, and there's a lot of thank you. So this has been so great. And I do see a hand is up. Um, is it Eliza? Elise. Hi. Elise, yes. hi. Hi, Nicole. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the recipe and also for taking the time to answer all of our questions. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot from you today. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you make them. I will. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. We might even get to see the finished product. Yeah, so I think they are done. Wow. <laughs> So we got some chunks of bananas and you can see it was a bit uneven in my portioning. We have a tiny muffin and a really huge muffin. 
Um, but when I touch them, my finger doesn't go through, they bounce back and they come out nice, no stick. I'll let them cool. I'll lay them on a rack here in a second. And I think my loaf is gonna take a little bit longer. We have a comment that says they look amazing. I bet the kitchen smells wonderful right now. Yes, I can hear my kids upstairs. I'm surprised they haven't led themselves to the smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, so can you just explain while we have um, a couple more minutes here, um, why you put them on the rack, on the rack to cool? Yeah, so if they stay in the pan, they tend to sweat. Uh, and that can make the bottom a little bit mushy. So I definitely want to take them out and put them on the rack so the air can circulate all around them. Um, cookies, you can let cool on the pan because they're not like encapsulated in the muffin tin, but the muffins will sweat and then they'll get soggy. Great, thanks for that. All right. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I think we can wrap up with the with the session this evening. And Nicole, um, I think everyone just so delighted and we're so happy that you were able to show us this great recipe. Um, once again, please share with us. Let us know what you think. Um, we have someone say, stating here, muffins looking good and thanks for the, the for the information so I can understand what's being said. So um, the, the information is also in closed captioning at the bottom of the screen. And of course we've recorded the session. So if you need to refer back to it, we are going to be posting it onto our, um, our uh, YouTube channel. Um, so please refer to that if you need to. All right, thanks again, everyone for joining and thank you so much, Nicole. I hope to see you again at a future workshop, if not through Brampton Library, through uh, the LMC website. Thanks again. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks. It was really happy. fun. Um, yeah, happy, happy to be here, happy to come back. So enjoy your baking. <laughs> enjoy everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.